The biggest challenge when you start live streaming is creating all the assets like starting soon, be right back, and the stream has ended scene. Starting out, you end up with the most basic stuff that you can put together. But what if I told you you could create amazing scenes tailored towards your niche with all your own color palette and branding pretty easily? Lots of people come on my stream asking about free assets and for that sort of stuff, there are some options. But then of course, everyone has the exact same scenes with the same colors and they're just okay. They aren't tailored towards your channel at all. They're just placeholders. Now I've been streaming for years and I have done my fair share of using free assets and even attempted to create hundreds of different iterations of my own custom scenes to mix results. And after all that time and energy spent for usually pretty disappointing results, I've come to the conclusion that I needed help or at least some sort of template that I could easily turn into what I'm looking for. That way these assets would look amazing, but also be my own unique brand colors and style. I found a solution that I wanna share with you today so you know what, let's get to it. If you're a content creator, you've probably seen hundreds of ads for Motion Array and Artlist. The problem is you have no idea what these services can do for you as a streamer. Because as a streamer, we're not editors, which is where these things are mostly marketed. You're going to find out today, and I have no doubt that you're going to be shocked at what kind of amazing streaming assets you can create using Motion Array and Artlist. Now I put some links down below in the description so you can go check this stuff out for yourself. And they're even putting on some really nice discounts for the folks who click my links, which I think is really nice of them. You won't believe how amazing these look and how easy they are to create. Let's create a starting soon scene right now. I'm gonna give you a brief overview of what you can find in Motion Array. And here's the problem with doing something like that. When you do a video like this, the company obviously wants you to feature their product and show you the different things and that it has and the different ways that you can use it. And the problem is that most of the folks in my audience may not actually even understand how these things work or what they can do for them in their live stream. So I can go through here and show you lower thirds and slideshows and topography and tools and logos and it doesn't honestly mean anything to you because you've never actually used it you don't understand how you put this sort of stuff into use but we've got lots of video templates in here and we've got lots of presets and all of these things once I show you how you can use them is going to make a lot more sense. And then you're going to have the opportunity to go and explore all these categories with excitement later, knowing how they can be used in your live streams. So we've got video templates, presets, motion graphics, and all of those things are different elements that you can add to your live stream to create intro videos, lower thirds, alerts, overlays, motion text, and all kinds of other really cool effects. Uh, then you have footage, which believe it or not is much more useful to a live streamer than you would think if you're ever looking for that background video or something funny to use in a little skit. You're going to be able to easily search for exactly what you're looking for right here. Whether it's a background, whether you want people in it, if it's going to be an overlay for smoke. If you wanted to add smoke to your live stream, there it is right there. You know, and then you have green screen and animation. So all of these things can be used in the live stream it's just a product of you've never done it or you don't understand how to use it you can search specifically for anything that you might be looking for it has music which again has all the same search functions you can search for duration beats per minute and of course genre you have sound effects graphics but i don't want to go into every little itty bitty piece of the things that are available in motion array because i know if you've never used any of these assets it's not really going to make a whole heck of a lot of sense to you anyways i think that most people that i know learn better through actually seeing and i'm going to show you and then I know that when you go to explore Motion Array, you're going to see the value of all these assets and how you can use them to make your live stream look absolutely amazing. So for our starting soon screen, I'm gonna go ahead and go into presets and DaVinci Resolve. And what I'm gonna do is go to backgrounds and I'm gonna scroll down here until I find the one I'm looking for. 
This one right here, counter timers for live streaming. And I'm just gonna go ahead and click the down arrow and it's gonna download for me. And so what I'm gonna do is go over here to the downloads. I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna go ahead and extract my download. And we could go in here and take a look and see what exactly is in here. And if you go into help in these folders, there's a video tutorial for how to get these to work. And there's also instructions for DaVinci Resolve's macros, just in case you have any questions. What I'm gonna do is go ahead and copy this out or cut this, and I'm gonna paste it somewhere where I keep all of my DaVinci Resolve macros and that sort of stuff. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna paste it right in here. So because these technically count as titles, what we're gonna do is go ahead and copy these out and this is what's in the macro folder, so right in here. And we're gonna go and we're gonna select all of them and we're gonna go and copy. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into the folder and paste these in here. So we're gonna go into program data and then we're gonna go into black magic design, DaVinci Resolve, Fusion, and then we're gonna go to templates. And what I'm gonna do is just create a new folder and we're gonna call this edit and we're gonna go in there and we're gonna create a new folder. We're gonna call it titles. We're gonna go in there and we're gonna go ahead and paste. So there we go, now all of this stuff should be accessible right in DaVinci Resolve when we start it up. Now inside of these folders, besides some help and your actual macro stuff, you're also gonna find fonts. And if you don't download these fonts, well, a lot of times it won't work. So it's pretty simple to do, you just click on it, they're all free. So it's gonna open in a website and you just download it. And then this is what the font files are gonna look like. They're just a zipped file and you can double click on them. And then this is what you're looking for here. These two, um, all this rest of this stuff is just for other things. If you go into any one of these, that's what you're gonna see. And you just right click, you go to open and then you just click install. And it's gonna tell me that mine's already installed. But if you don't install these, a lot of times these plugins and stuff just aren't going to work. So just make sure that you install your fonts. And then once you do, you can go ahead and open up DaVinci Resolve. And we'll just start a new project. We'll just open an untitled one for now. We can name it when we're finished. And the first thing I'm gonna do is go up into File and Project Settings. And we're just gonna make sure that this is the same as our live stream. So we're doing 30 frames per second. It's 1920 by 1080. So all that stuff is proper. We're gonna click Save. And then what we'll do is we'll switch over to Edit. And most of the time, yours is probably gonna look like this. You're gonna have your media pool over here. You may have it extending down. Um, and what we'll do is we're just gonna go ahead and we're gonna click Effects and we'll go to Titles. And if we scroll down here, we're gonna see our live screen timer. So we can just highlight over them. It's gonna give us an idea of what they look like over there on the preview screen. And this is the one I'm looking for. So I'm just gonna go ahead and drag it over here. And if we click play, you can see it has a nifty little on-screen animation. All of almost nobody will ever see that or when you actually start your stream. And if we go ahead and let it count down, well, you can see it does a countdown. So let's look over here and we can see that this is the white color for this and the white color for this, the yellow color for the background, which I think is a touch on the bright side. Here we go. I'm gonna go ahead and change to brighten this up like that. So there we go. And I'm gonna remove the hours and I'm gonna go ahead and adjust our size up like that and we can move to make sure that we have it centered properly and all that good stuff. Um, in order to get five minutes we're going to be right around 9,100 and boom and so then if we come all the way over here to the side you could see it does about five minutes and one second which is gonna work. We're gonna go and just drag this to where it reaches zero and believe it or not it will count up once it reaches zero. So we wanna to get to the zero mark right there before it hits one. And now you're gonna see it counts all the way down to zero. We're gonna scroll down here. You can change your live stream in text if you'd like. We're gonna brighten up that blue and we're gonna go ahead and adjust the size. And I'm just gonna move this up a little bit right here. We'll come down here and we'll just put our YouTube. And there we go. And we can go ahead and adjust this as well to make it a little brighter. And we can change our size up so it's about the same as what the other one is. So now if we go ahead and hit rewind and we've got our timer. Looks perfect. 
So now I'm gonna look for something that we can put in here. So we're gonna go back to Motion Array, and I'm gonna go to Presets and DaVinci Resolve Macros. And I'm gonna go ahead and select my version of DaVinci Resolve. That just means that there'll be less chance that something won't work right. We're gonna go into Logos. I'm just gonna find something kinda cool that does a logo reveal that will work with my style of logo. You can see some of these packs have whole bunches of different styles of logo reveals. I think I like this one. We're gonna go ahead and download that one and we'll see how it works. Just like before, we're gonna go into our downloads and I'm gonna go ahead and right click and extract it. And I'm gonna right click and cut this out of here and put it into my downloads folder for my plugins. And then we'll go in here and see what this is. And so we've got fonts and help and we've got a settings. So we could just take our settings and put it into our titles. So we're gonna go ahead and copy it and we're gonna go to the same folder that we went to before. So we're gonna go to Program, Data, Blackmagic, DaVinci Resolve, Fusion, Templates, Edit, Titles, and we're just gonna go ahead and paste it right in there. And we wanna go ahead and make sure that we get our fonts. All right, so now we have all of those fonts installed. What I'm gonna do is exit out of our DaVinci Resolve, and I didn't save this project yet. So let's save this as Countdown. And then what I'm gonna do is reopen DaVinci Resolve. And this is just to make sure that all those fonts get in there properly. Now I'm gonna go ahead and go back into our countdown project. You can see everything is still here. Now that we have that set up and we have the other one installed, I just moved a logo in here. That's my regular logo. What we're gonna do is we're gonna click on here and we're gonna go into Fusion and we're gonna go into our effects tools here. And we just wanna go into templates, edit and title so we can find the FTD beautiful Fusion title that we have right here. We want the live stream countdown to be over top. So we're gonna go ahead and drag this over top of that and it's going to create a media out which we can go to there. So now when we go ahead and play this, you're gonna see that this is all behind there. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and select our beautiful thing and we don't want it to be Ultra HD, we only need it to be HD, so we're gonna go ahead and adjust it like that. And now what we're gonna do is kinda of zoom in here for now, and you can do that by holding the control and using your mouse wheel. And so what does this all do? Well, this animation rate controls the animation of the stuff that you see here, and the distortion. It's all relatively self-explanatory. Now, I don't wanna use this box, so we can look for the frame and we can eliminate the frame. And what I'm gonna do is use my logo instead. So I'm gonna go to media pool and I'm gonna drag my logo in here. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and connect it right there. So now it's got a facsimile of my logo right there. And what I'm gonna do is go over here to camera edit and we'll use the X axis to bring it out over here. So now if I just click the play button, you will see that we're counting down and we have this all animated up and we can adjust all of the animation stuff for this by going in here into controls and we can adjust all of the animation, the hue, the saturation, pretty much anything that you could possibly think of. So when we go back over here and we go back to the beginning, we can see this popping in there and we've got our animation there. Well, let's go ahead and animate this to come on. So we're gonna go over here into Fusion and we're going to click on here and we're gonna go all the way back to the beginning and we're gonna go to our camera edit here and we're just gonna use our X Translate to go all all the way over here so it's off the screen and we're gonna click our little button right there to set it and then we're gonna click play and we're gonna bring this all the way on the screen right there and then I'm gonna go ahead and bring our logo all the way on the screen right there so now what we have at the very beginning of this intro is both of these things happening at the same time. We just have to adjust the speed at which they happen so you can't actually see this logo. So we can do that by managing our splines. We're gonna look at our camera X and you can see the motion right there for our camera X. And so we're gonna select this right here and we're just gonna go like that and bend our line. And we're gonna do the same thing right here, bend our line. And now let's see here. 
And what we want to do here is just make sure it comes on afterwards. So we want to go up here and select it and maybe give it a little bit more of a curve up here at the top. So it slows down a little bit. So let's see what that looks like. We don't want it to appear before this is fully extended and then it should kind of pop out there. And I think I don't hate it. Let's go over here and we'll go ahead and see what we get. Now we're going to do the same thing for the other logo. This one right here. I'm going to put it right there and I'm just going to zoom in a little bit so it lets us stretch this out all the way to the end. And there we go. And then I'm going to go over here to the point where everything is out the way it's supposed to be. And with the logo selected, I'm going to go ahead and zoom it to make it pretty much the same size as this is right here. And I'm going to go to the point in this animation where everything stops moving. And I'm just going to zoom in here and make sure it's centered up. It's about the right zoom size, I think. And so if we play this, you'll see that it kind of just animates behind it like that. And there are lots of things we can do with this. We can adjust the transparency right here in composite like that. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the opacity to zero and I'm going to let this all kind of come out like that. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to mark a little keyframe here and I'm going to move this out here and I'm going to adjust the opacity up on this. So let me show you what that's going to look like. This will come out, that'll come out and it will do its thing. And then my logo will kind of pop in there so it's visible. And then what I'm going to do, you can see my keyframes right there so we can make sure that they are visible is I'm just going to fade it out again. And then what I can do is take these three keyframes here, kind of move these out so it will fade in slowly and it will fade out slowly. So that gives you some idea of the rate of speed that all this is moving at. It will fade out slowly as well. And what I'm going to do is go ahead and copy these three and just hit control C and we'll move down here and we'll just hit control V and there we go. Now we've got another fade in fade out and we'll hit control C, control V to paste another one and uh, control V to paste another one and we'll do one more. So now we've got an animation where our logo will fade in and out over top of it. And that's pretty much all we need. We have a countdown timer that's gonna work great for our live stream. So we can essentially export this by going into deliver. And what we're gonna do is gonna call this timer. And I'm just gonna browse to a location where we're gonna save our timer. And I'm gonna click save. And I wanna save this in YouTube 1080 right here. So we've got 30 frames per second. Everything is good to go. So we're just gonna add this to the render queue and go up and click render all. And it will take a little time. You can see this is gonna take about 27 minutes. Now the next thing we wanna do is take our countdown screen to the next level. The best way to do that is to add awesome sound. So what I'm gonna do is create a new project and I'm gonna just call this starting soon final and we'll go ahead and create that. And all I'm gonna do in this particular case, we'll go into the edit screen and I'm gonna just drag that video in there and it says we got a different time stamp so let's go into file and project settings and there we go so it's 30 frames per second that's exactly what we're looking for so we can just bring this down here into our timeline and of course you can see we don't have any audio here at all so we can add sound effects if we like but for something like a timer it's best just to go with possibly a musical score or something like that i just want to see exactly how long 
this is. So we could see it's five minutes and three seconds. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go over here and we're gonna find some music that's gonna fit in. And Artlist is the perfect place to find music and sound effects for this sort of thing. So it really depends exactly what we want. A brief overview of Artlist, if we go into music, you can select mood, theme, genre, instrument, spotlight, and you have the ability to sort by staff picks, vocal, instrumental, beats per minute, and you can select any duration that you want for any given type of music. But I think what makes it really awesome is the way this stuff is categorized. So you've got cinematic and R&B and electronic and hip hop, and you can essentially decide on whatever type of music that you want, and it's the ultimate search tool. And this music is extremely high quality. So you can search for any type of music. We can do a search for metal and we'll find all sorts of rock and hip hop metal style stuff. But the beautiful thing is what if we want a mood in there as well? We can go ahead and search for those by mood. Uh, maybe we want dark and it will add that to the keywords and we're going to get that style of music. And the beautiful thing about it is we can dial it down even further by going over here and saying, okay, we want the song to be at least two, two and a half minutes long to cover the segment that we're working in. And then you can see here, four minutes, four minutes, two minutes. So we can even dial it down further by saying it has to be between two and a half and three minutes long. And there we go. So we're gonna have all of these set up so that they're gonna be in that time range. So when you're creating an intro or whatever, you can actually dial up the style of music, the mood of the music, and of course, even the length of the music to determine exactly what you're looking for. And that's just in the music category. You have the ability to do the exact same thing with sound effects, which is absolutely awesome. It's really easy to search for sound effects that uh, are gonna give you exactly what you're looking for. And then they have footage, which is video footage that you can add to any video, intro, whatever you're doing. This is actually a lot more useful in a live stream than you would think. You've got video templates over here that can add text templates, lower thirds, that sort of stuff. And then of course, plugins and different apps that you can add as well. None of those are gonna be particularly useful to live streamers. What you're really gonna be using is the music and sound effects and possibly the footage. But I just wanted to give you a brief overview of the absolutely amazing assets that you have access to with Artlist. They're all top notch, they're all professionally done, and they're going to make any live stream that you do look more professional or sound more professional as well. And I like trap music. So I'm going to click the search here. So we're going to go with trap and we're going to go with dark. And there we go. So we've got some dark trap style music right here. And we could go with any duration. Uh, we want to be somewhere around the five minute mark. There we go. So now we've got stuff that's exactly the length right there. 503. So we could just take a listen. Not really what I'm looking for. Something like this could definitely work for an intro. I like that. Now you might obviously want to spend a lot more time going through the music to select it, but for the purposes of this video, this is going to work just fine. And you can just click download. It's going to give you some choices. I'll just choose MP3. And then I want to go ahead and copy that into the location where I'm going to be actually selecting the music for the video. So then all we need to do is go back into DaVinci Resolve where you can see we have our countdown timer right here. And all we want to do really is add music. So we're going to go and we're going to grab our music we're gonna drag it into our media pool and then we can just drag it down here and we can put it right over top of this since there's nothing there anyways and I'm gonna cut the bottom off of this right here and we're gonna zoom in to the very beginning and we're gonna go ahead and cut some of this beginning piece off first we need to go ahead and just make sure it covers up this whole thing like that and the beginning piece is cut off 
So we're all good to go. Now I'm gonna expand it out and we're gonna see how much extra there is. And it looks like we could probably get away with just clipping it like that and seeing what it sounds like at the end. You probably wanna be listening to headphones, but pretty much we just added a musical score to our countdown timer. And now all we have to do is export it, which is really simple. We just go into deliver and we're gonna go and select our YouTube again and we can call this countdown final with sound and we want to browse to the location where we want to put this and then just add it to the render queue and render it out and it'll take a couple seconds and once this is finished exporting we can just load it into our live stream as a media source it's that simple we can also optimize it using other optimization tools but that's a topic for another video now i think this stuff is so cool in just a few minutes you can create assets that look amazing and are in the style that will accent your personal brand. I'm interested to know what you think. Let me know in the comments below. Artlist and Motion Array are offering some cool discounts for folks that click my links in the description. How much of a discount? Well, I create videos that are up for years and these things change all the time depending upon when you watch the video but they are for sure taking good care of my viewers and I really appreciate that. So check those links out right down there. Now you could spend the time to create an overlay on your own. To see how you might wanna do that, you should check this video out right here. Big thanks to Artlist and Motion Ray for sponsoring this video. I couldn't possibly do any of this content without them or you, so thanks. And if you're always looking for tools, tips, and tricks to help make you a better live streamer or YouTuber, subscribe to the channel. My name is Michael Fire Jr. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day, and I'll see you in the next one.